Hello, hello, hello. So I'm back. I'm back with a new functionality in Rhino that I feel is pretty cool. And usually these kind of small things in Rhino, I showcase them during live streams. But in this case, I feel like the function that we will see here is pretty interesting. So I have decided to do a dedicated short form video here and just to show you the capabilities of it. So basically our test subject is going to be this little arm that we've modeled during the live streams. Nothing special. Um, I can show you the, the shaded version of it. You know, just a few fillets, a few, a few surfaces here and there. Um, it's actually a, just to kind of plug my live streams a little bit. It's actually a part of a bigger project that we're working on and I will be live streaming it tomorrow, which is Sunday. So if, if you're around, check it out, drop by, say hi. Anyway, uh, for our testing, we only need the arm and that's what we're going to be doing. And another thing that we need is for me to tell you about Skillshare. Young designers are constantly pushing boundaries and Skillshare offers the perfect platform to help them thrive. From mastering 3D modeling and creative visualization to exploring graphic design, Skillshare provides the tools to enhance any creative practice. Courses like AI in Design show how to integrate cutting-edge technology into design workflows, allowing designers to innovate and stay ahead in a rapidly evolving industry. With specialized lessons in building a creative career, designers can also develop the skills needed to turn their passion into a successful profession. Skillshare empowers creative minds to grow, stay inspired, and take control of their creative futures. The first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one-month free trial of Skillshare. Get started today! Uh, what we're going to be using. So, the tool that I want to, call, uh, to showcase is called Snapshots. If I type in Snapshots, this little menu pops up. And basically, the way this tool works, it lets you save the current state of your file in Rhino, right? So you, you're basically taking a snapshot of the model, how it is, all of its slides, everything, how it is, and you're saving it in Rhino. So what I mean by that is, let's do something very simple. Save this, snapshot one, it's going to ask me, uh, what do I want to save? And in this case, you can see that we are able to save the layers. We are able to save the lights, mesh modifiers, objects, all of the clipping plane uh, variations and so on. All of these can be saved. Rendering, camera, blah, blah, blah. So I just hit OK. And now I have a snapshot of it. If I were to rotate out or move some parts around and so on, and I'm like, oh no, I need to go back. I can just double click that. It's going to complain because it's going to say, oh, you're destroying the current view that you have uh, by, you know, trying to go back to the original snapshot. Would you like to save this as a snapshot as well? And in this case, I'll say no. And we just go back in, back in here. So you'll notice that transition, right? And that transition is very, very interesting, I think. So that transition happens when you go to your animation tab in the snapshots right here or animation tool in the snapshots and you toggle animate snapshot restoration. And here you can choose, you know, how, for how many frames um, does it play and how many milliseconds between each frame does it have. I think the default works quite fine, but you can play around with it. Right. So. Once you have tick marked the anime snapshot restoration, when you're moving in between snapshots, so let me do another one. Let's say something like so, without any movement whatsoever. Save, snapshot 02, there we go. And now if I toggle between the snapshots, you can see that it very nicely kind of transitions the camera because the camera is the only thing that was changed in this case. So explode the diagrams, animating uh, sections, everything can be done in here. So let's actually try out something nice. I will make one snapshot. Um, let's call it, uh, let's say right here, right here or something like that here. Save that. 
hit OK. I'll make another one that's zoomed in a little bit like so. Save that. Uh, actually, we need to unclick and then save. So that is snapshot 02. Now we can toggle between these two. That doesn't matter. I want to... Oh, actually, I made a mistake because we're... Um, or actually, maybe we, we do want to keep the shaded view because it also saves the views, don't forget. So we need to... Um, you need the viewing styles. So you need to first select the style that you want. In this case, I'm keeping it as a shaded view. Um, then let's do an exploded view of it. So I'm just going to lift some stuff up. Like so a little bit more like that. Perhaps this one goes down a little bit more like so. There we go. And that would be my snapshot. I'll call it 01 2. Yep. Uh, let's do that. So now you can see. Oh, come on. You currently model state is not saved. What do you mean? It should be saved. No, I don't. keeps complaining okay so basically now we have the exploded okay don't show this message again this is annoying uh no so now we have the exploded view right of the snapshot and then i can zoom back into the arm where it you, you saw that it all compresses and now let's say i want to explode the arm while also having the camera rotate so let's take the fingertips, move those down. Take the middle sections of the fingers, move those down. Main sections of the fingers, move those down. Perhaps the fingers here can separate out a little bit. Just something like this. And then I need this to actually Hmm. Okay, let's try doing that. That. This is also a part there. Something like that should do the trick. And then the whole thing here also moves down a bit. And this moves down a bit. Okay. And then we get a snapshot of of this something like that hmm, that would be a cooler view but ah, whatever like that okay so i save the snapshot again snapshot 03 sure whatever hit ok and now we have a uh, snapshot one so that's the start of my animation then we go to this animation when you're showing this stuff to the client i think this is very useful right so i'm just double clicking between the two views so i think you can now you know your, your your mind is going and you're thinking of different ideas of what you could do with this um i think this is uh, this this is going to be helpful to uh, to a lot of people that's why i'm doing a video uh one last thing before i leave you here is let's say snapshot zero one um let's do a clipping plane then zero one dash two hmm All right, <laughs> clipping planes don't work. I should have tested this out before the, the recording the video. Clipping planes ain't working. Okay, 
well they do work they do clip but the the thing is that as as the clipping plane is moved and as the camera moves the clipping plane does not like it toggles only at the end of the clipping uh, or, or of the transition uh which you know unfortunate uh, i wonder if we can do partial restore uh, not layers not lights not nothing not rendering not views only clipping planes that's a no okay so you can't do an animated clip animated clipping plane unfortunately uh you can only do uh, kind of have a clipping plane jump between one state to another state which is still fine um but the main main purpose of this is dealing with transitions and kind of get getting the, the the most amount of information available to your client right as you're showcasing the model so i think this is this is pretty cool all right um again tomorrow i stream if you want this model it's available for patreon supporters link in the video description see you there bye